edition and go. Ah, type in a title. Uh, working around the tripod. I don't want to call this. Essie, stop licking the carpet. Well, hello, dear washer. Sam is here, and October is is over, which brings us mercifully closer to the election. So please vote if you have not done so already. Um, today we're going to talk about my October wrap-up. I read 11 books this month, and I'm very excited. I am on my way to 100. Um, it was one of my stretch goals is to read 100 books in a year, just once. It I have friends that consistently do that every year, and I'm always just a little jealous, but... Um, it's strictly the circumstances of this garbage year that has allowed me to read so much. And uh, I, I, am, I am at 81 books right now. And my goal for the year was 53 on Goodreads. So was it 53 or 56? Uh, was it 53 or 56? I don't know. Uh, Goodreads is moving so slowly. Do I want to leave this page? I guess I'm going to for the sake of accuracy because you care so much. 53, I was right. Now go back to my reads. Okay, so now that that little mystery is settled, uh, I hope y'all had a wonderful, safe Halloween and got lots of candy, and I hope your sugar highs treated you well. Uh, I was home alone this weekend, so what I did was decided to, uh, because I hate myself just a little bit, as I think we all do, or is it just me? Existential crisis. Uh, what I did was watched a bunch of home invasion movies. <laughs> like I said, because I hate myself a little bit. So uh, I had a little movie marathon. I watched Hush, which was on Netflix, which actually I liked that one a lot. Then I watched the I Spit on Your Grave 2010 remake. Um, that one's super rough. So like all of the trigger warnings, don't watch that. Uh, it, like research that one first. Don't don't watch it if you're sensitive please. Um, and if you do watch it, can't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> it's rough. But anyway, and then the other one I watched was The Strangers. And I actually I liked Hush more than I liked The Strangers. I stayed home by myself and had a little movie marathon about home invasions. Yay me. So let's talk about books today. Like I said, I read 11 books this month, and I'm well on my way to my 100. Um, if I hit a minimum of nine in November and then 10 in December, or, you know, th it's, it's going to be good and I'm going to do it. And this is my year. <laughs> I don't typically read for the numbers. That's not something, I mean, I like to push myself to read more every year, but I'm not a, you know, I, I want to read because I enjoy reading, not necessarily because I have to read this many books, but when I saw that I was getting closer this year and I just kept going, like I hit my Goodreads, I hit my Goodreads challenge number months ago and I was like, oh shoot, okay. And then I was like, hi, ah. and my, my one friend is like, it's your year, it's your year, you're going to do it. And I'm like, meh. If I get there, I get there. If I don't, I don't. But then my competitive brain started kicking in and I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm going to read a hundred books this year. It's my year. So... Here we go. The first book I read this month, I almost said this year, My Daddy is a Hero, How Chris Watts Went from Family Man to Family Killer. And this was by Lena Dirhali. I apologize if, apologize if I say that name wrong. So this book I saw come up on my library app on um, Overdrive. And there was no wait because I, I had put a couple other books on hold and there was no wait on this one. And I... Um, none of my audiobooks and my Audible were just kind of speaking to me. And this one, I was like, oh, I haven't read it. I haven't listened to or read a nonfiction in a while. Um, I prefer nonfiction on audio. It's cool. Let's pick this up. I, I listened to this. This guy is messed up. This dude who is a literal sociopath, um, probably psychopath, uh, doesn't sort of have the normal human emotions. He pretends that he does so he can settle into normal 
life. It's very Dexter-ish, only he kills his family instead of other bad guys. So with this one, there's no mystery around it. It says it in the name of the book, in, in its tagline, that he went from family man to family killer. He murdered his, his pregnant wife and his two children. And then dumped their bodies and then tried to get away with it. And he did not get away with it. There's also a documentary on Netflix. Uh, now, what was kind of interesting was I read the book and then I immediately watched the documentary. And all of this, this is pretty current stuff. And that's, it's insane. Um, so reading and listening about the text messages and exchanges and then seeing it on the documentary, I was like, oh, I know where this is in the timeline because the book obviously goes a little more in depth into the timeline and some of the conversations. So I could fill in the gaps of what was in the doc on Netflix. So to see it, read about it and then see it. And then I have a face to put to all of these characters, all of these people, because they're not just characters in a book. These are real people to put them. I can put all their faces onto what I had just read about. So it was just very, uh, it's a really sad story. It's so, so sad. So just trigger warnings for violence. Um, it's, it's not something, again, that you'd want to read if you're very sensitive to that kind of stuff. All right, moving on to something else that is freaking disturbing as well. So a month or two ago, I read The Deep by, or I'm sorry, The Troop by Nick Cutter. And I really, really liked that book. Uh, I actually have a dedicated vlog to that one in Wilder Girls because we were talking about body horror. So I'll put that in the tags or in the cards up there. <laughs> I really liked the troop. The deep really um, hurt me. It, it really upset me. There is, a, a, I mean, spoiler alerts. <laughs> there is a dog, and the dog dies. Now, the dog didn't just die. It was used as a manipulation tactic, and I do not like that. The animals that died in the troop had a purpose for being in that story. They were lab animals, and they were showing what the worm, what that illness does to you. In this one, the like there was no reason for the dog to go out the way it did and for it to be drawn out the way it did, and I just... It upset me so much. I, I, so I cried my eyes out because I, I have dogs. I've been a dog advocate my whole life. And I'm just, um, <laughs> pit bulls are not dangerous. Stop blaming the wrong end of the leash. So, you know, and this dog going out the way it did and the way it was drawn out was very manipulative to get that reaction. And I don't like that. If there's no purpose for something to happen, then it doesn't need to happen. I, I did not feel that there was a purpose and it really sucked. Um, after that happened, I did not care about any of the other characters, did not care if they lived or died, did not care about the ending of the book. The, the manip How manipulated I felt caused me to not care about the rest of the book, which sucks because it was really interesting. It was getting, it was, it was really interesting. The premise is, is, is cool. The premise is a little more sci-fi-ish, sci-fi sciency versus the troop which is a little more science virus illness based sciency there is a pandemic in the beginning beginning of this one as to why this team is going down to the bottom of the ocean you know in uh the challenger deep marianas trench area uh to find a cure and what they find is very unexpected but i won't go into that so the pandemic it like sort of deteriorates the the disease that's on on surface on on the earth top uh, on land is um it sort of deteriorates your brain and you forget what you're doing you forget to eat you forget that you have to use the bathroom you start regressing mentally emotionally physically and deteriorating and it's just you're watching your loved ones sort of become this like shell and it's highly contagious and it's very dangerous and scary. So a team goes down to the, to the challenger deep to find, they think that there's something there. They're looking for the cure. They think that's what it is. That is not what they find down there. What they find down there is something wholly different. Yeah. That's the deep. If 
No, oh, my battery. No. Alrighty. There we go. No, wait. I don't think that's level. Anyway, brand new, fully charged battery. I'm just trying to judge my setup based on where the gnome book was before I had to turn everything off. Okay, well, I think that's I think that's about where we want to be. Okay, back to it. So, um, that was the deep. The next book I read was a novella by Brian McClellan, and that was Servant of the Crown, which is part of the Powder Mage series. So this is the second novella I've read. There's two more before the book. Now, he has, there's more than just those four novellas before the first Powder Mage book, but these four are the ones that come in like the set together. So I think these are like the four main ones that have to do with the characters that we get into with the like novel series. So Powder Mage, I'm so excited to get into this series because the um, I've never heard of flintlock fantasy before, and I, I've <laughs> I, I've sort of been out of the the fantasy game for a while. So re-entering into it, Brandon Sanderson everywhere. I've never even heard of the guy until the last year year and a half, and all of a sudden he's everywhere. And I'm like, oh, and I just read my first Sanderson and totally completely adored it. Anyway. Flintlock fantasy is something that I've never heard of, and I think it's kind of on the grim dark side as well as what I've heard. And I have enjoyed the first two novellas. Now, what happened in Servant of the Crown? You have Tommen, not Tommen, not Tommen. You have Captain Tomas. Um, it's T A M A S, so I don't know if it's Thomas. Or like if it was traditionally T-H-O-M-A-S, if it's Thomas or Tomas. I kind of like the pronunciation of Tomas, so I'm going to keep saying Tomas. Tomas, 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 Tomas. He was up for a promotion. And he's a lower-born person climbing the ranks of the military. And people don't want him to climb the ranks of the military because he's a commoner. That's a huge thing. Like, you're just a commoner. You're just a commoner. And Captain Tomas is like, I'm just a commoner. Mm, I'm just a commoner. So there's a lot of that. And the strive to get over that and just do what you want to be want to do and do what you need to do. I don't know. I really enjoyed it. So <laughs> the captain meets a highborn woman. She's a powder mage from she's from the first novella. And she wants to learn how to use her powers. So the first novella is called Forsworn. So she's from Forsworn and moves into Servant of the Crown and is buddy copping with Captain Tomas, and there's, like, a love story there. I'm doing a shit job at explaining this because I am just all over the place. I should really take notes. <laughs> so, so Captain Tomas is in trouble. He's on, he was put on leave from his, his military duty because he's, he's being punished. So, he could potentially be stripped of his rank and then kicked out or he'll never be allowed to he'll never be allowed to um progress and get his uh and get his promotion the king calls him to his chambers he shows up he and the king have their meeting and then this pisses off another group of people that are trying to usurp power from the king. And then explosions and battles and powder magic abide, you know, abound. And it's so much fun. And I think Brian McClellan is a really good writer. And I had a blast reading this. I can't wait to get to the next two. And then the official first Powder Mage book. The next book that I read is by one of my favorite authors, as of our many people's favorite author, is that's Neil Gaiman. And the book is The Sleeper and the Spindle. Now, I watched um, Murphy Nepier's videos, and she just gushed over this book. And I got to say, the artwork is beautiful. The story is really, the story is very inventive. It's so short that I don't want to get too deep into it. Um, great Great for children, great for adults. I had a lot of fun reading it. I'll be reading it again. I just rented it from my library, and the ebook 
copy. It has the pictures as well, so you don't need the big physical copy. I haven't found a decently priced physical copy anywhere yet either, so another reason to either get it for your, to probably get it from your library. The next two books I'm going to put into one one here. I read the first two volumes of The Boys. My boyfriend and I just finished watching The Boys. The show is fantastic. I loved it. I heard that the the graphic novels were darker, were grittier, and I'm good with that. And then I read the first two volumes. I uh, They're by Garth Ennis. I have such... I had such high hopes for this. I'm not sure if I'm going to continue. Um, I'm, I might. There's only 12 whole volumes. Uh, so the first one, okay, pretty much follows the first episode or two of The Boys. So we know what happens. Uh, tr trigger warnings for sexual assault. Um, trigger warnings for harassment and violence. So we know what happens there. If you don't, consider yourself lucky. <laughs> but again follow those trigger warnings and then I think you get into the second one and that these came these started coming out in 2008 the homophobia in these graphic novels is next level I was having a real issue with with a lot of what was being said and it's I Every panel is some sort of deranged sexual thing. And while I don't, I, I'm by no means a prude, <laughs> um, this is very much, if you excuse the term, just a suck and fuck type of story. That's, I don't know really where the story is, I guess, the the show is fantastic and they took a lot of these elements out and modernized it and it became something so much better and such a commentary on on our lives today and it's it's great the graphic novel's tough to get through and i am not someone who is easily deterred i might try a couple more volumes just to see if something comes of it but it's not necessary reading if you enjoy the show that's i'm gonna leave that there the next book that i read was the one which is number three in the selection series by kira cass so this takes us to the one, the one that Maxon is going to marry. Who's it going to be? Oh, no. I don't know. Like, it's some mystery. I, these books are just, they're, they're fun. They're light. They're fluffy. I enjoy them. That's all. Oh, oh. Okay. This book actually surprised the crap out of me with something near the end. I literally was like oh, what so I I was so so sad um oh I don't want to give it away but I want to talk about it so there's a character that that passes away in such a forward manner <laughs> that I was not expecting at all and I was so sad by oh my gosh it it Kira Cass hurt me with that one. The next four books were all read for the Black SSF-a-thon. I had a lot of fun participating in that. Um, due to some shenanigans in my personal life, I didn't participate in all of the like Instagram and, and Twitter, you know, challenges, picture challenges and stuff like that. I just um, followed the prompts and read, read a bunch of books. So their group book was The Jumbies by Tracy Baptiste. This was super cute. So The Jumbies is like an amalgamation of, of traditional Caribbean folklore. And what was really fun is you can see the folklore that has been woven into other fantasies and things like that. The types of monsters, types, types of lore, types of witches, um, children and stuff like that. So this was a lot of fun to read. It was super cute. Uh, the audiobook was only a few hours long. So you can see in my, my little, my little crafty video where I made 
uh, where I made Planthony. Planthony, that's his name. So where I made Planthony Squints is his full name. Um, I was listening to that while I was making him. The next one is The Unkindness of Ghosts by River Solomon. This is my second River Solomon book this year. Uh, the other one I read was The Deep. And I liked The Unkindness of Ghosts far better. All right, so the next book I read was 100,000 Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin. This is my second N.K. Jemisin book. The first one I read of hers was When is Black Future Month? And it's a short story collection. And she is such an inventive writer. I had such fun reading her short story collection. Now, I, I love her food-based stories. Just, oh, those are my favorite ones. So I, I want her to do full novels just like on food-based stories. <laughs> so Because I would read those. I would eat those up. Ha, ha, ha. So this story uh, follows um, Yena Dar. And she is a barbarian from the north, and her family had called her down because they want her to be the heir to their throne um, uh, after her mother dies. So her mother dies mysteriously, and Yena finds herself in a, a big old power struggle between family and the gods and uh, discovers a bunch of stuff about herself in the process. So this was a, a fun story. I will say that I did like... The short story collection better than this one but I have the city we became of hers to read and I also have book one of the broken earth trilogy to read and I already own those I do plan to get to them I do like her writing a lot but this one just was not I, I of the the whole two of them I've read they're both very good I just like the short story collection better the final book that I read this month was Binti by Nnedi Okorafor, uh, just book one in the novella trilogy. Now, Binti is um, Binti is a child of or is is a young woman who whose family never leaves Earth. They are of the Earth. They are Earth people. They are desert people. She wears this uh um she wears this clay that her uh her culture always wears because they don't have access to clean water so that is actually how they how they wash themselves as to how they stay clean is to have this clay on them and it, it's it's not just functional it's also cultural and she gets accepted to umza uni which is a planet um, where she's going to go study another planet where she's going to go study the ship that she is on gets attacked and she's the only survivor and then the story follows how she deals with that and what happens from there uh, because it is so short I'm not going to get into anything further than that so this was a blast to read like I said those last four books books were for the black SSF -a -thon. that is what I read this month in October um, November is here please don't forget to go vote have a plan to go vote uh yeah Let's do what we got to do. And until next time, 